the Lydia pause. <laughs> going to start off by defining singleness as a word and let me tell you what the definition is a state of being single or paying attention to one thing right so state of being single singleness is the quality or state of being one unmarried divorced widowed or without a romantic partner in legal terms a single person is someone who is not committed and not in a committed relationship or civil union. I really like that definition, especially how it says being able to focus on one thing, right? So since you were single, you are the one thing, right? But for us, since we are followers of Jesus Christ, obviously it's God first and then us. Now, when we're in a committed relationship, or a marriage, right? That's when it's like you and a romantic partner, you guys to come together as one, right? The marriage part. Our issue as single mothers is that we had that type of commitment, not married, okay? The reason I wanna talk about singleness before we talk about the motherhood part and kind of separate the two is I wanna get a level of understanding between the two situations. To be single does not mean to be alone or lonely. Those two words actually have two different meanings in themselves. Single means to have a singular focus. Alone means to have no one and nothing, including God. And loneliness means to feel disconnected from, right? So you feel disconnected from God, you feel lonely. You feel disconnected from others, you feel lonely. Alone is a state of being that is far out, the far out reaches where you get into very dangerous zones because you just don't, you start to really question why are you even here? Like what's even the point? And in reality, it is a mental state because are we ever really alone? Like you go outside, there's always people there. You go to the store, there's always people there. You go in your house, unless you live by yourself, but there's usually somebody there. Singleness is a way to serve God. The Bible says that singleness is a way to follow Jesus and devote time, energy, and relationship to help others. So you have more time when you're single to be able to really pour into service, into servanthood and growing as a servant of Christ. Now, it's not to say when you're married, because, you know, that's our goal. That's our goal. When you're married, you will have time to do those things, but you still have to communicate with your husband. You guys have to make that decision together. Like, where do you placate your time? Like, what do y'all do? Do you do this or that? Versus when you're single and it's just you and just the Lord, you can do 10 things if the Lord allows you to. Versus when you're married and it's you, your husband, and the Lord, you guys may only have the time to do two things. So that makes the difference. It isn't that you won't be able to serve with your husband. It isn't that you won't be able to help when you have your husband. But when it comes down to is when you're single, you have more time because you're not doing wifely duties, okay? Now, obviously, while we're single, we have to become wives. So that means we have to start doing these things. So in those efforts of us learning how to serve properly, serving the Lord, serving the church, serving our home, serving our children, serving ourselves, serving our family, serving our friends, serving our school, serving our work, serving the poor. You see where I'm going with this? All those skills we're learning then gets transferred into the marriage. And the same thing is happening with a man of God. God is working on his heart so that when he comes into the marriage, he's prepared to pour into you as you pour into him while the Lord pours into y'all. Okay. So there's a lot of work that you're able to do when you're single because the work has to be done to get married so that you already have the skill set. That is the whole point. When you go to work, you learn skills. Okay. So then... Singleness can be a joyful life. Now, I know you're probably like, how? <laughs> how? Let's break this down. The Bible says that the single life can be one of the most joyful lives under heaven. 
And I agree with that. You're able to get up and go. You don't have to get out of your marital bed. Look at your husband and say, hey, can I please go do X, Y, and Z today? You don't have to do that. You get on your knees. You pray. You talk to the Lord. You say, I'm going to do this, 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 this. The Lord, you tell the Lord your plans and he will establish it for you. He will prepare the way for you, right? Now, if you're not meant to do something, God's obviously going to correct it. So before y'all jump in the comments and be like, Lathea, I'm like, I know, babe, trust me. But what I'm saying is that there's joy. There's peace and contentment also, if you want it to be there. Those are fruits of the spirit. So I want to chime in with one that's really, really big to me. Singleness gives you the opportunity to work on your trauma. So it gives you the opportunity to go to therapy and go to Christian counseling to deal with things that have happened to you in your past, like maybe from relationships, childhood, family line curses, whatever the case may be. You might be dealing with lust and that lust has been in your family for generations. You may be dealing with alcoholism or any type of addiction. Maybe you were essayed as a child. Maybe you were essayed as an adult. So there's so many different types of trauma that we go through in our life as women. Being single gives you the opportunity to work on all of that with God. So that way you're not bringing that baggage into your marriage. That way you're not no longer carrying that baggage around in your relationship with God. First and foremost... We have to understand as daughters of the king, women and men look to us with an expectation. And I don't think sometimes we recognize. We're about to land this plane, sisters. Okay, let's wrap this up. How do you feel in your single season? Let me give you a little bit of testimony from your girl. I have been single for quite some time. It's been a while, okay? I'm not really ready to get into the semantics of how many years. But it's been a while, and it isn't to say that I haven't went on a date, because I have. It isn't to say that I haven't tried to be in a relationship, because I have. I even I even got weary, y'all, and was on some dating sites a couple years back, because I was weary. It was wearing me out. And I quickly was like, that ain't going to work. Because what they're looking for, I'm not looking for. And at this point, I'm the problem. Okay, so you got to remember that. You have to really lock in with your discernment with the Holy Spirit. So you can be, so the Holy Spirit can let you know real quick if you were the problem or not. I love when he do that because I like to correct it immediately. I don't like to stay like that. So yes, it has been some time. It has not always been enjoyable. But because I didn't want to enjoy it, it was like, I want my husband now. And it was like, how, how are you going to talk to the Lord like that? Like, first and foremost, calm down. Let the Lord do a good work for you. Let the Lord prepare that man for you. Let the Lord prepare you for that man. Okay? This is not a one-way street. This is two lanes. Let the Lord clear your heart out. And this is what I was saying to Lathea. This is what I was saying to this lady. I was like, you going to have to stop. And I was like, and I was miserable about that. Because I was like, I don't want to. Because I don't want to be like what Paul said. And let's get into what Paul said. Okay? You ready? Paul said, to the unmarried and the widows, I say that it is good for them to remain single as I am. Now, Paul was celibate. I'm not sure if Paul was celibate or not because I've heard stuff say that Paul had a wife. So I am really sure. But he said he, he says single as I am. I don't know if that was just this period of time when he was writing this letter. But hey, let's keep moving. But if they cannot exercise self-control, which is a fruit of the spirit in Galatians. They should marry for it is better to marry than to burn with passion because all that does is lead to sexual immorality. And that's first Corinthians seven, eight through nine. So a lot of the times we have the conversation, what if I don't ever get married? Odds are you will. Now there's a whole bunch of other factors that go with that. So that's, that's what I have for this takeaway. Odds are you will get married, but don't you want to be prepared first? Don't you want to be the woman of God for your husband? As always, ladies, it has been such a joy, the biggest joy in my heart to serve this community. I am your sister in Christ, but I'm also your sister in struggle. 
I am a single mother myself. And yes, I want to get married. Of course, I want to serve my home, serve my Lord and serve my husband. But in God's time, not in my time. So I say that to say this to you. Let the Lord do a good work in you. Okay. Jeremiah 29, 11, for I know the plans that I have. Plans to prosper you, not to harm you, to give you a hope in a future. If you are listening with this message, go ahead and leave a comment, like, and subscribe. Remember, I have videos on Thursdays or Sundays. God bless.